So we really want to start learning physics uh, and specific examples of problems using the field of one-dimensional kinematics. So we can follow some basic procedures for every single physics problem that we might be trying to do. And these six steps that you see over here will work no matter what you're trying to solve. The first question you ask yourself is what is physically happening in the problem that you're giving? Uh, in all the problems that we'll see in this video, they'll all be kinematics problems. Uh, it might change as we start learning more physics. Step two is you want to list all the given values. And I'm going to go ahead and recommend that you convert all these values into SI units. Life will be much cleaner and you'll make fewer mistakes if you convert at the very beginning into the SI system. Step three is to list the unknowns. What are the values that the question is actually, actually asking you to find? Step four, you want to find any relevant equation or equations that you might be able to use to get you to that unknown value. Step five is going to be the algebra, um, or what you'd call plug and chug, where you take your numbers, plug them in, and actually start calculating things. And then step six is going to be a sanity check, where you make sure that your answer makes sense. And you can do that with a process that we've talked about called dimensional analysis. So in 1D kinematics, we want to break out our tool belt. Our tool belt for 1D kinematics is going to be the kinematic equations. And we have three of them, three main ones that we want to know about. Most of the problems that you're going to be given could be solved with equation number one, equation number two, or equation number three, or some combination of these. So we want to keep these equations in mind as we jump into solving some actual kinematics examples. So let's do an example problem. Uh, for those that have the textbook, this is from the OpenStax College Physics textbook, uh, chapter 2, number 23. Uh, so this problem asks us, we have a light rail commuter train that accelerates at a rate of 1.35 meters per second squared. How long does it take to reach its top speed of 80 kilometers per hour starting from rest? So it doesn't seem like we were given a lot of information, but we were given a ton. And what I like to do with kinematics problems is always follow the same procedure and always write a little chart of all the values that might be relevant. In kinematics problems, we might have a change in position, delta x. We might have some initial velocity, v0. We might have some final velocity, vf. We might have some acceleration, a. Or we might have some change in time, change in uh, delta t. So I can take these values and I can write these down as blanks for every single problem that I want to do involving kinematics. Then I can start actually plugging in, plug and chug, and figure out what I know. What am I given versus what do I need to find? And in this problem, right away in the very first sentence, the commuter train we hear, we read, is accelerating at 1.35 meters per second squared. So I can write down right away my acceleration is 1.35 meters over second squared. Then I'm asked how long it takes to reach its top speed of 80 kilometers per hour. So I know it's reaching a speed of 80 kilometers per hour. So that's going to be the final speed that I get up to, 80 kilometers over hours, if it starts from rest. So I'm starting from rest, so I know that my starting velocity is going to be zero. And finally, we want to know how long it takes, so I want to know delta t. So in particular, in this problem, we don't have any information on delta x, so hopefully we won't have to worry about that. So the first thing we want to do is look at all of our numbers to get our givens, and we want to convert them all so that they're all in SI system. I can notice right away that this 80 kilometers per hour is not given in SI units, so I need to convert it. I can do my dimensional analysis. I know that 1 meter, 1,000 meters, rather, is equal to one kilometer. So I'm using the factor label method to get rid of units, to get my kilometers converted into meters. And then I want to do this with hours as well. I want to convert one hour up top into 3,600 seconds. 3,600 seconds in an hour. So my hours cancel out, and I'm going to end up with meters divided by seconds, which are the units that I want. That's the SI unit of velocity. I multiply these numbers out and I get 22.2 .2 meters over seconds. So now I have all my units in the correct values, in the, in the correct form. I have all my givens and now I need to look at the equations that I could possibly use. So I have my three kinematic equations 
I'm just going to think about all the different ones I can use. Uh, let's start with the first one if you have no idea where to start. We'll start with VF equals V initial plus A times delta T. So let's see if I can use this equation. Let's look at what I'm given. Uh, first of all, I have VF in the equation. And if I look, I'm actually given what VF is. I have V naught is next in my equation, and I'm actually given the V naught. A is next in the equation, and I am given an A. And then the only unknown I have is delta T. So I can immediately plug and chug my numbers in, and you're welcome to do this, but my suggestion is that you start doing algebra on these letters. It will make your life much easier in the long run if you get used to doing algebra with letters. So I need to get T by itself. So let's do that. I start with VF equals V naught plus A delta T. I need to isolate that delta T. So to do that, first I want to subtract my V naught over to the other side. So in algebra, I can do anything I want to my equations as long as I do it to both sides. If I subtract VF from the left side, I get V final minus V initial is equal to my V naughts on the right hand side are gonna cancel out, so that's gonna to go to zero, equals A times delta T. Now to get delta T by itself, I need to divide both sides by A. So we're doing basic algebra here. My A's cancel out, and I get my delta T is equal to V final minus V initial, all divided by A. And at this point, I can plug and chug my numbers in. So delta T is equal to V final which is 22.2 meters per second minus the initial, which is zero, all divided by the acceleration, which we were given as 1.35 meters per second squared. I plug all these numbers in, and I get a final answer of 16.4 seconds. And the last thing I can do is a sanity check. So let's look and make sure that my units make sense. I have meters per second divided by meters per second squared. And to do this, I have a fraction inside of this denominator. And if I want to divide by a fraction, I can actually multiply by the reciprocal. So this is equivalent to me saying meters per second times seconds squared over meters another algebra rule that we need to start getting familiar with again. My meters cancel out, one second on the bottom cancels with one second on the top, I end up with just seconds, I end up with the time. So my sanity check checks out. So I've done this problem now, uh, I've done the first part and everything makes sense. So now we can move on and start looking at the second part. So the second part, we're told that the same train ordinarily decelerates at a rate of 1.65 meters per second squared. Now we wanna know how long does it take to come to a stop from its top speed. So to do this, let's recall everything that we were given and everything that we just solved. So let's write up our little table, our little chart again, of all the things that are relevant for kinematics equations, for kinematics problems. I have delta x, I have a v initial, and here I am told that I'm trying to come to a stop from my top speed, and we just solved that our top speed uh, or we're just given that our top speed is 22.2 meters per second. So that's going to be my initial velocity. My final velocity, if I'm going to come to a stop, has to be equal to zero. My acceleration is actually me slowing down. It's a deceleration, so that's going to be a negative 1.65 meters per second squared, as given in the problem itself. And then my delta t is what I'm actually looking for. So I can once again look at my equations. Uh, I can start with that first one, VF equals V naught plus A delta T. I am looking for the change in time. I know what my A is, my V naught is, my VF is. So I literally just derived this equation. I used algebra to figure out what delta T was uh, in any case uh, on these problems. So I can solve it very generally. I can use the same equation that I used last time. I derive that delta T equals VF minus V naught over A. 
by not plugging and chugging numbers immediately, I can just flat out use this equation that I already uh, figured out. So then I can plug and chug my numbers in now. My delta t is equal to 0, minus 22.2 meters over seconds, all divided by negative 1.65 meters over seconds squared. So plug and chug your numbers in, you get your delta t is equal to 13.5 seconds. So there are common pitfalls that people would make in a problem like this. The most common one I would see is people would forget that this is a deceleration and would not plug in this negative number. If you don't have this negative number, then you get a negative time. And time is one of those quantities that cannot be negative. So you would know that you made some kind of error there. This would be your sanity check. Okay. So we can continue to solve this problem. And there's another part. So you'll notice this in physics problems. They're very, very multi-part. Uh, so in C, we are given the following. We are told that in emergencies, the train can decelerate more rapidly, coming to rest from 80 kilometers per hour in 8.0 seconds. What is its emergency deceleration in meters per second squared? So I'm going to make my same chart that I always make. Change in position equals something V initial equals something V final equals a equals and delta t equals and now i can plug and chug the numbers that i know i am not given a change in position so i still don't know what that is my initial velocity is the train decelerating much rapid more rapidly coming to rest from 80 kilometers per hour in 8.3 seconds so i know it's starting at 80 kilometers per hour which is going to be equal to 22.2 meters per second Go ahead and get everything into the SI system. I'm coming to a stop, so my final velocity is going to be 0 meters per second. Acceleration, I am asked to find that, and I know that it will decelerate uh, in 8.3 seconds. So now I can look at all the equations I could use. Uh, go ahead and start with the first one. We'll see if that one works. Vf equals V0 plus A times change in T. I know what VF is, I know what V initial is, I don't know what A is, but I do know what T is. So I can solve this equation in uh, terms of A. So I can subtract V initial from both sides. So I'm doing algebra on the letters. My V naughts cancel on the right, and I have VF minus V initial on the left. This is going to be equal to A times change in T. I want to solve for A, so I can divide both sides by change in time and I get that my acceleration is equal to V final minus V initial, all divided by change in time. I can plug my numbers in. V final is equal to zero minus V initial, which is 22.2, all divided by the change in time, which is 8.3. I plug these numbers in and I find an acceleration equal to negative 2.7 meters per second squared. And again, we can do another sanity check. The acceleration here is negative, which should imply that I'm slowing down. And sure enough, I see my velocity initial is higher than my final velocity. So this sanity check, this answer makes sense. And we've just finished an entire physics problem on kinematics. Let's see one more example. So this is going to be number 25 in chapter 2 of OpenStax Physics, if you're using it. Uh, number 25 says, at the end of a race, a runner decelerates from a velocity of 9 meters per second at a rate of 2 meters per second squared. Part A, how far does she travel in the next 5 seconds? So I again write down my chart. I have a change in position. I have an initial velocity. I have a final velocity. I have an acceleration. And I have a change in time. And I need to plug in all the values that I might be interested in. Change in x, I was not given. Initial velocity, I was told in the problem, I'm running at 9.0 meters per second. Final velocity, I'm not told what that is. I'm told the acceleration is 2 meters per second squared, and that the time is 5.0 seconds. So I can look at all my equations and see if any of them will work. Go with the first one, if you have no idea and can't see what to do. Uh, so Vf equals V0 plus A times change in T. Now I'm asked to find the change in position. So I can analyze if this equation is appropriate. 
And I can see right away it's not because it doesn't have delta x anywhere in it. So that would not be a good equation to start with. If I didn't know that, didn't see that, it's fine to just write it down uh, and, and visualize, visually uh, see that it doesn't give you change of position. So let's go to the next equation. Let's go to change in x equals v initial times change in t plus 1 half times a times change in t squared. And let's see if this equation could work. I'm looking for change in x, and I have a change in x in this equation, so that's potential. Maybe I can use this. v initial, I am given. Change in t, I am given. Acceleration, I am given. And change in time squared, I can calculate that. So at this point, I can actually just plug and chug right into this equation. And I get my answer very quickly. Delta x equals 9 meters per second times 5 seconds plus 1 half times 2 times 5 squared. And you can plug and chug all these numbers into your calculator and you'll find a change in x equal to 70 meters. So we used a different kinematic equation and got our final answer. Now, our next question is part B. What is her final velocity? So what is the final velocity of this runner? Let's figure that out. So to do the next part, let's write down our chart of what we know. Change in x, which we just solved for, is actually 70 meters. So I know that. I know v initial is equal to 9 meters per second squared, or meters per second. I know v final is what I'm looking for. I know the acceleration is equal to 2 meters per second squared, and the change in time is going to be equal to 5 seconds. So I want to find what the final velocity is. I can go to my kinematic equations. I know v final equals v initial plus a times change in t. Is this an appropriate equation to use? I'm looking for v final. I know what v initial is. I know what a is. I know what t is. I can plug all my numbers in and get my answer. v final equals v initial of 9 meters per second plus the acceleration of 2 meters per second squared times the time of 5 and I get my free final is equal to 9 plus 5 times 2 is 10. Plug it all into your calculator if you can't do it in your head, and I get a final velocity of 19 meters per second. Let's look and see if I could have solved this with other kinematic equations. Could I use change in position equals v naught times change in t plus 1 half times a change in t squared? This equation wouldn't make sense, because I'm looking for vf, and there are no vfs in here. So that equation wouldn't be good. I could also use vf squared equals v initial squared plus 2 times a times change in position. I have all these values, so I can actually do this. I can use this equation. vf is going to be equal to the square root of v initial squared which is 9 squared, plus 2 times the acceleration of 2 times the change in t of 70. So I can plug all of this in to my calculator. And I can figure out what this is. When you start solving this out, you'll get v final is the square root of 361, which gives you 19 meters per second. So I could have used either equation, it doesn't matter. The, as long as all your numbers are consistent and correct, you'll get the right answer no matter which equation you use. And that's how you basically solve any kind of kinematics equation uh, problem. Make a little chart of what you know, start looking at your kinematic equations to see which one you can use, uh, and then plug and chug.